Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever it is that you're actually dialing in or listening to this webinar today. I want to welcome you. Uh, this is Rob Ray, Vice President of Business Development with Data. I'll do a quick introduction of the actual webinar, what we're going to be talking about today, all the attendees that we uh, all the uh, presenters that we have today. Really cool content for you guys today. I'm actually really super excited about this webinar. It's one that I myself wanted to do uh, here because, of course, we're going to be talking about sales and marketing, which is the key to uh, making all this actually happen, grow your businesses, those kinds of things. So we got lots of content I want to dig into. Um, I do want to encourage you that if you have questions throughout today's presentation, please type them into the Q&A or the uh, questions forum there. Uh, if we have time at the end of today's webinar, we actually will get to those questions, but whatever questions we can't get to, we definitely we'll follow up with you and answer those questions directly with you. We're also recording this webinar, so we will make a recording, uh, a recorded version of this webinar available for all of you guys, both through Datto as well as through um, Managed Sales Pro, who is also uh, doing this webinar with us today. So that being said, um, all the lines have been muted as well. We actually have well over 100 MSPs on the actual call here, so unfortunately we can't have that two-way conversation. So again, if you have any questions throughout today's presentation, please type them into that question form. Otherwise, let's get started. Now, in the backup disaster recovery space, by far the greatest winner that all of us have had over the last, I'm going to say year and a half, two years, has definitely been talking about ransomware. And as ransomware becomes even more and more of an epidemic, that's a great story for us to be talking about because, of course, you, the solution provider with the right solutions, have the ability to help these customers prevent these actual attacks. Or, or help them through these actual attacks. We've actually been looking at some stats here because of course, Datto being 100% channel only, uh, selling predominantly through managed services providers, we want the SMB, the end users out there, using an MSP for their IT services, that whole outsourced IT virtual CIO kind of stuff. So a lot of our end user efforts and promotions are actually around using MSPs. When we talk about things like CryptoLocker or, or ransomware, this is where an MSP has a distinct advantage over a company using their own services or having their own in-house IT guy or not using an MSP. So we've been also using a lot of this to actually promote managed services and the, and the value of becoming and, and working with uh, those MSPs that are out in the market. And here's a perfect example of this. Um, this is actually a great partner of ours out of Australia. He was actually the first Australian partner Datto ever had, and he joined Datto about a year and a half ago. Now, what he did was he started really focusing on the effects of ransomware, the effects being uh, the impact it has on your system, the impact it has on your company, the impact it has on your image, and more importantly, the impact it has on the downtime that it causes within your company. Well, this is John from Geek, uh, Geek IT down in um, uh, Adelaide, Australia. And what John does and what he has become over the last year and a half, because he focuses his story around that and his marketing around that, he's become the go-to guy in that part of Australia for all media. So this guy, anytime there's like that WannaCry attack or the more recent attacks, Everybody calls him for comments and calls him for quotes, which of course leads to business. And that's because he's been marketing himself purely as an MSP that can solve these new problems that these SMBs are having. That's ideal state for what it is that all of us want to do, where customers are literally calling you going, I know you can solve my problems. Where do I sign? And that's been working really well for him. So we're going to talk a little bit about what some of those MSPs are doing, some of the messages that they've actually got going to market, and then how. How are you doing it? It's wonderful that all of us vendors give you tools and give you tips and give you tricks on how to go and sell your services, some of those angles that you can talk about, but how do you actually do it? What is the steps? What's the process? And we've done a number of things here at Data to help you with it, but it's only part of the story. The beautiful part about this webinar is that we're going to complete that story. And of course, that's going to involve other services here like Managed Sales Pro. We're going to talk about that. So what are the high growth MSPs that are actually doing it? How are they doing it? And how are they actually doing it right? So as I mentioned myself, I'm Rob Ray, Vice President of Business Development. Just celebrated my four-year anniversary with Datto. Very happy to be here. Um, actually, I've been spending a lot of time going around the channel, doing presentations. If you've actually seen Datto live at a show, uh, if you've seen one of our presentations, a webinar, it's probably myself or a member of my team that's actually doing it because we are actually the evangelists for this type of technology. 
helping you guys open those doors with your actual end users, helping you grow your actual businesses. Longtime friend of mine, Carrie Simpson's also joining us. She is the founder of Managed Sales Pros. You're gonna learn a lot about Managed Sales Pros throughout the course of this webinar, but in essence, Carrie's here to actually leverage a lot of her experience. I will share with you guys that we here at Datto do use Managed Sales Pros for our lead generation. So these guys are good, and obviously I'm bringing to you the same company that we use to help grow our business, and I can uh, definitely vouch for that. On top of that, they actually have been working with a lot of MSPs, a lot of our partners, and a lot of the partners that have been leveraging them and their programs are definitely amongst our most successful ones. And I'm gonna introduce you to David Kazowitz. Now, David is the EVP over at Hilltop Consultants. Hilltop Consultants has been a data partner for a number of years. They've had some very good growth over the last couple of years, and David's been an integral part of that growth. Hilltop actually sits on our partner advisory board as well, but the most important part is they're a data partner, but they also leverage managed sales pros from an MSP perspective and the program that we're about to show you guys. So David's gonna actually join us as well and talk about how uh, Hilltop has leveraged this and how Hilltop has demonstrated growth as a result of doing this. Now, quick introduction to Datto for those of you that don't, are, are not aware of us or haven't really uh, heard the story. We're about a 10 year old organization now. We're actually founded back in 2007. And back in 2007, the owner, founder, CEO of our company, who is still the uh, owner of our company and the CEO of our company, Awesome Accord, started Datto in his parents' basement, took a loan from his parents, started the company in the basement. What he did was he looked at technology from a new angle, okay, specifically backup technology. And what happened was because he came at it from a fresh set of eyes, you know, he's 22 years old at that particular time, so he's not dealing with any of the legacy rules or, or ways of going to business or ways technology worked. And that's worked out really, really well for us, the way the technology is designed, uh, some of the innovations, fighting things like downtime instead of focusing on actual uh, disasters, the fact that we're going beyond backup and talk about virtualization. I mean, there's a million stories as to why Datto has been successful. You fast forward 10 years later, we now have nine offices around the world with nine data centers around the world. Uh, we've actually have over 800 employees and about two years ago now, we got our first billion dollar valuation. So obviously grown from a one man shop in his parents' basement to 10 years later actually generating and, and being the valuation over a billion dollars. It's been an incredible ride, but again, a lot of it's got to do with the new threats that are out there and therefore the need for the new technology. And that's kind of the story that we've been telling. Most of our staff are in support and development. We actually employ a ton of engineers that are doing nothing but designing, improving, making it faster and better for you guys, coming up with new ways of looking at the technology and of course, with those new ways of technology comes new angles that you can talk to your customers about, new approaches that unless you're another MSP that you're competing with is using our product, you'll have differentiators. So a lot of what we do as far as innovation, even around the product level, creates differentiators for you so that you have new stories and new messages to give your actual customers. The most important part about all this is that we've remained channel only throughout this entire thing. So when you look at some of the initiatives that we've got, even from a sales and marketing and tool development perspective, it's all focused around the MSP and getting that MSP message to market more so than the data message to market. So again, we're going to explore a lot of that today if you haven't seen it. Uh, over 100,000 devices deployed worldwide now. We're actually uh, even more than that. This number was uh, probably about six months old. And of course, we've been expanding into newer markets. Uh, we've actually been expanding quite rapidly in the Southeast Asian market. I mentioned Australia as well, with offices in Canada, throughout Europe, and then of course, our head office is uh, here in Norwalk, Connecticut, and then offices throughout the United States, along with data centers in each of those different markets. Now, from a product perspective, and I'm not gonna to spend too much time talking about product, but it's really important that when you are talking to your customers about data protection, we're not just talking about servers. Obviously, datto has got a lot of innovation from the desktop space all the way to the SaaS applications. And more importantly, we've actually been getting into the networking space recently, which has been a massive win for us and our customers. So I'm gonna talk just briefly about a couple of those items. The first one, uh, and again, a new angle for our customers, our MSPs to go and talk to their customers about, has been that ransomware detection. This is a patent pending product, 
uh, technology that we've developed in-house where we actually scan the backup. And if we see an executable that looks like ransomware, we notify you, the MSP, so that you can be proactive with your customers to say, we believe ransomware is in here. Now, when you're comparing or when you're competing against uh, either a backup company that's trying to sell direct to your end user or another MSP that's not using data, again, this is a nice differentiator for you guys. And this is just one piece out of a million that you can actually focus and talk about. So it's been a big win for our customers. In regards to SaaS protection, as we continue to see things moving towards the cloud, specifically I'm talking about Office 365, we've done a ton of work and at DattoCon this year, back in June, launched our newest version of Datto SaaS protection, which is the Office 365 protection. Brand new engine under the hood, lots of speeds, lots of new things that we've actually added to it to make it the most robust Office 365 backup in the industry. Now, if you don't know why you should be selling Office 365 backup, I can give you two reasons as to why. I'm gonna ask you to contact me afterwards because I don't wanna specifically focus on this, but I can give you two reasons why that will help you sell more services to your customers in every scenario where they're using SaaS. And our SaaS protection is now the fastest. We've done speed tests against every competitor in the market and you will have the best technology under the hood so that you guys can actually deliver the best services to your actual customers. And then finally, I wanna talk a little bit about networking. Datto made a huge investment recently, and it specifically goes back to the whole idea of what Datto is. When we started the backup company 10 years ago, it's because we looked at backup and said, this stuff sucks and we can do so much better. And that's where the innovation has come from. Well, recently we actually renovated our building in Connecticut. I'm gonna say about two years ago. And the same kind of idea, we've got 150 at that time, 150 engineers working in Connecticut, and they all think they can build an awesome network, right? Switches, access points. They bought all this equipment, firewalls, routers, and then realized when you put it all together, it actually didn't work that well at all. So what happened was we started looking at why connectivity actually sucks. We came up with a number of different things. First of all, multiple vendors, the support from a lot of these organizations isn't consistent. It doesn't fit to an MSP model. You know, a lot of times you're cobbling these things together. The management interfaces are poor. They're not built for the cloud. There's very little innovation or insight going on as time actually goes on. And it definitely is not built with an MSP business model in mind. And when you look at the evolution of all the products that we're using in the market today, they've all evolved, right? Servers are now infrastructure as a service, applications are going to the cloud. Even backup is now talking about continuity and not backup, but nothing has happened for networking. So what we've done is we have actually developed a managed networking service offering. It's a solution that is built for an MSP, so built with you and your needs in mind, but priced for the MS or sorry for the SMB market, so that you have a value add offering where you can go and make money to your actual customers. Cloud based, very easy to set up, fully integrated with all the tools that you work with, and that wonderful 24/7, 365 direct to text support that you guys are used to when you're dealing with Datto and everything around Datto. So that's the networking story, that's the SaaS story, that's the ransomware story, all the innovation that we've got. Again, all of these, I'm gonna tie it back to marketing here, all of these are new angles, new conversations. That's what you're looking for when you're talking to your existing customers or trying to prospect new ones. So those are all the ones that we've actually been working on. Now, along with that, we actually have a ton of marketing tools, tools that we've developed to help you guys go to market. One of those has been our ransomware report. This has been by far one of the most downloaded things that we actually have. It's a white labeled report that gives very easy tips or very easy uh, figures, facts around ransomware. It's the most comprehensive ransomware survey that's in the channel today. It's white labeled so that you have the ability to give it to your customers with your brand on it and be able to start that conversation around ransomware. So very easy to understand stats, very helpful kind of uh, look to it so that your customer can very quickly look at it and see where the gaps are. How does my MSP help me? What are some of the threats that are actually out there? Why do I need to be concerned about this stuff? You know, uh, this is uh, industries that are certain impacted. How can I solve this? And it references all the different technologies that you guys sell to them 
to help them close this gap, including backup and disaster recovery. So lots of really cool stats that are actually built in that. That's been a huge marketing win for our partners this year. Um, how else? Okay, and this is another one. We actually get 5,000 downloads a month on this actual tool. This is our RTO and RPO calculator. Again, another tool that we created free for our customers to go and have the conversation about the cost of downtime. So again, another sales angle that you guys have got. This one again, it's uh, it's been one of the one of the most popular ones that we've got. We've actually are working on if we don't already have it a 2.0 version. Same with the ransomware report. The 2017 version is coming out very very shortly. Should have that probably in the next two weeks. So again, constantly coming up with these tools to help you guys go and talk to your customers about this. And then finally, we launched more recently market now as a portion of the Datto partner portal. So if you are a Datto partner, you now have the ability to use a tool called market now and market now allows you to load things like the ransomware report, load things like your own collateral or all the collateral that we've got in there and be able to push it out to your customer in a very easy way. And the best part about it is it's free for all Datto partners. You don't pay for this integrates with all the other tools that you're using, including ConnectWise and Autotask. You can launch email campaigns, co-brand all of our marketing material. It just makes it a simpler way to actually use it, push it out, get the analytics back, find out who opened these emails, who didn't, those kinds of ideas. And uh, very, very cool and very good win for our customers as well. Leads, reports, all those different things that you need, again, to help you grow your managed services business. Now, as I mentioned, that's technology, those are tips, those are tools, those are tricks that we've got. We give you the mechanism with market now to be able to go and deliver it to the prospects that you've got out there along with reports in the background. The key is though, how do you find these prospects? And this is where I'm gonna turn it over to Carrie Simpson to talk about Managed Sales Pros, leverage some of her experience on how her organization actually can help with these things and some of the best practices that she's seen with some of our customers. So Carrie, you on the line? I am. Thanks, Rob. Perfect. I'll turn it over to you. All right, well, thanks for joining us today, everybody. As Rob mentioned, my name is Carrie Simpson. I'm the founder of Managed Sales Pros, and I've had the privilege of working with uh, almost 100 MSPs over the course of the last four years, and we've learned a lot. So uh, obviously, 20 minutes isn't a lot of time to go into everything that we want to talk about today. But if you check out the Datto blog, you'll notice that there are six posts that we put up there over the course of the last six months. So anything that you hear me talking about today, if you want to have that expanded upon a little bit, feel free to run back to the Datto blog and read the longer posting about it because we did talk about everything in more detail. So let's move on from there. Rob, do I have control of the? You should. Okay. There you go. All right, so what are high growth MSPs doing right compared to their counterparts? It really all comes down to sales and marketing. You know, the companies that are thriving are doing a great job at it, and the ones that are struggling are struggling. So when people come to us, they always ask us, well, what's the secret to marketing, and, and how do we do it right? Well, there is no way to do marketing right. There's an old saying, 50% of my marketing is working, but I'm not sure which 50% it is. There is no right way to market. There is only effective marketing. So the goal is to start doing things trying them, finding the ones that are getting results for you, and then improving on those ones while dropping off the other ones. So how do you pick which ones are gonna be the most effective for you? It's gonna be a lot of trial and error. There is no secret sauce, there is only work. And nobody ever likes to hear that. Everyone likes to think that there's a set it and forget it magical piece to their marketing. There isn't. Whether you're doing it internally or you're getting a third party vendor like ourselves to do it, you can't just expect it to happen. You're going to have to work for it. So there are six key differences that we've identified over the last four years that have shown us who's doing it right and who's struggling. And here are the six things that we've identified. First of all, high growth MSPs understand and nurture their sales pipeline. They measure the correct key performance indicators. They're actively soliciting referrals. They understand and actively use wedge selling techniques. They grow their revenue within their base, first and foremost, and the most important one of all is they execute. 
So how do you understand your sales pipeline? The sales pipeline for managed services has changed. Even in the last couple of years where we've been calling outbound, it's changed. And what is it? What does it look like now compared to what did it look like before? Well, there are two ways to develop a sales campaign. There is displacement campaigns and disruption campaigns. So displacement means that they're already doing something to solve a problem and you're going to have to replace that competitor. Whereas disruption means you're the first one there. It's a land grab. So disruption means land grab and displacement means knockout. Disruption sales require education. So if you're the first person to ever sell something into that organization, you're going to have to spend a lot of time explaining what that thing is. Whereas displacement, just moving a competitor out, requires more of a volume approach. Disruption, so all of that education, relies on a more highly skilled sales executive, whereas displacement is going to be dependent on timing and will mostly focus on process. So you won't need as expensive or as skilled an asset to execute on a displacement campaign. MSP sales prospecting at this time is almost 100% displacement. Everybody that you want to do business with is already doing business with someone else. So real or perceived, you are going to have to displace a competitor. The biggest barricade you're going to come up against when trying to sell your services, we're happy with what we have or we already have that. So how do you become more effective at countering that? Well, you have to do it more often. You have to develop develop a process that ensures that your timing is perfect and you never miss an opportunity. So I like to say this over and over again, but the clients that you want to do business with aren't breaking their contracts because they got a great call from a great sales guy and they're a little bit PO'd at their current MSP. The clients that you want to do business with choose to do business with you after you develop a relationship and they make an informed decision that yes, you are in fact the correct company for them. So how do you find those clients? Well, first of all, data integrity becomes the most valuable thing within your organization. It becomes a thing that you live and die for. Process will ensure that you are properly nurturing those leads, but if you don't have the data in your database to begin with, your process is going to be useless to you. So what are you looking for? You're looking for things like, when does their current contract end? Who are they doing business with now? Why did they choose to do business with that company? And when are they thinking about making a change? So you need all of that information in your database, in addition to how big are they? What's their budget look like? Your deals aren't going to close overnight. so. If you encounter an interesting opportunity, but that company still has a couple of years remaining on their contract, that's not a real opportunity. They're not going to stand up one day unless something catastrophic happens and say, you know what, I'm really angry with my IT provider. I'm going to break my contract and I'm going to come over to your company. You don't want business like that. If they're going to do that to this company, they're going to do it to your company. So proper sales prospecting builds trust within organizations, and your deals, again, they may take months or they may take years to close, but you have to begin those relationships somehow. The biggest challenge you're going to have is remaining consistent. So a consistent adherence to the process that you've defined is what's going to win you deals. MSPs come to us regularly and say, you know what, Carrie, I built my company on word of mouth. All of our business came to us organically through clients that we worked with and people that we knew and people that were happy. Referrals are a gift. They should be treated as such. They are not a long-term business development strategy. Referral-based selling is what leads to feast and famine in your sales cycle. One day those referrals are going to stop coming in or they're going to stop coming in for a long enough period of time that you're going to have a huge hole in your sales pipeline and you're going to start seeing that reflected in your annual numbers. So what normally happens is lots of referrals come in, lots of referrals come in, everybody gets busy, people stop prospecting. They just drop the ball, they've got lots of proposals to write, they've got lots of things to follow up on. That stop start activity means huge holes in a couple of quarters. So every quarter that you aren't prospecting is a full year of follow-up activity that drops out of your pipeline. 
So I want you to begin thinking about nurturing that referral relationship. Anybody that's bringing referrals to you, fantastic. That's wonderful. Make sure that you're keeping those guys happy, but don't rely on it as your only source of sales prospecting. You need to start creating a process, defining that process, putting that process into play so that you've always got new opportunities coming down your pipeline and you don't have to rely on referrals. Done is always better than perfect. So don't sit down today and start developing this process that you're going to use a year from now when you finally get it done as perfectly as possible. That is never going to happen. Your process is never going to be perfect. You want to start today, start figuring out what works for you and changing it as you get better at it. So the process that you have today may not be the process that you're using in a year. But every month that you're waiting because you're trying to create that perfect process is another quarter of opportunity that you're losing. MSPs that understand their sales cycle also understand what they should be tracking, measuring, and improving. Numbers never lie. So we have good weeks and we have bad weeks for ourselves, for our clients. The numbers come in, the numbers go out, but eventually they always even out. If you are applying a consistent process to your prospecting, the numbers will always come back to where they're supposed to be. So for example, if you wanna know what's happening with your sales reps, instead of looking at how many appointments they're putting up on the board or how many sits they've got this week, start looking at the back end and see what's going on there. So a lot of the time, people come to us and ask us how many dials do we get every week or how many appointments are we going to get and how many dials does it take to get that appointment that is a really misleading kpi you can have a caller for example who sits on their phone all day browsing youtube and dumping calls they look like they have great numbers look that caller made 140 dials today well that caller did nothing today except dial the phone and hang up the phone and dial the phone and hang up the phone so you don't really want to look at one number. You're going to look at a series of numbers. And you're going to be able to forecast, once you begin putting your sales process into place, you can forecast based on facts and not feelings. So what do we mean by that? A lot of the times, sales reps can be either aggressively optimistic or aggressively pessimistic. So myself personally, I'm a very optimistic forecaster. Every time I talk to somebody, I think they're going to buy something from me. Whereas my business partner, Tracy, she's a very pessimistic forecaster. She doesn't believe anything is going to close until the paper gets signed. So if you looked at my forecast, if I was assigning a percentage or a weight to any deal in my pipeline, it would always be like 50%, 60%, 70% higher. Where if you looked at Tracy's forecasting, it's going to be 50%, 40%, 30% or lower. So somewhere in the middle... That's what's actually happening. And if you can assign your percentages based on activities as opposed to how your sales reps feel about what's going on, you're going to have a far more accurate pipeline. And if you apply process, as we've discussed previously, you're going to have a pipeline that helps you predict revenue for years, not just for a quarter or two quarters. If you are gathering the correct data, feeding that data into a system and managing that system, you're going to be able to identify, hey, look, here are 17 things that we have in our pipeline. Over the next quarter, they're going to mature. Their contract end dates are here, here, and here. And that's when they become actual opportunities. You can't really assign revenue to a forecast before there's a real deal on the board. So if I have a great conversation with somebody and they're like, yeah, Carrie, love what you do. Eh, we just signed a deal with one of your competitors, though. We're engaged for the next two years. But you know what? In two years, call me back. We'll have a conversation have a conversation then. I could technically say, okay, there's an opportunity there. But if I assign revenue to that opportunity on the day that I have that conversation, it's going to be a very misleading pipeline forecast. And when I hand those numbers into somebody, they're going to take a look at them and we're going to start staffing based on those, right? So if I'm forecasting based on how I feel about a deal, maybe I've got six extra telemarketers sitting around doing nothing because my forecast was incorrect. Whereas if I had assigned it to an activity, their contract is expiring on this date. We're going to call them back on this date. And that's when the revenue gets assigned to the deal. That all of a sudden becomes a more accurate pipeline. And our ability to staff is reflected in that. So 
if you translate that into how it looks for managed services companies, you don't want to forecast incorrectly and onboard texts that are going to be supporting nobody. And conversely, you don't want to have too much business at any given time. So the more accurately you can forecast based on real numbers, the better you're going to be able to balance out your resources with your requirements. So here are the numbers you really need to know to understand what's going on in your sales pipeline. Dials to engagement. So what do I mean by that? You can dial all day without speaking to anybody. So dials to appointments, sometimes that number could look really, really prohibitive, like 300 dials to one conversation. But if you look at the number of times that a caller actually gets a decision maker on the phone and engages with them, that's the number you want to take a look at. So what does that number tell me? If that number is really high, so it takes them 500 dials to get engaged, they're having trouble getting through gatekeepers. That's the challenge. How do we train them to better get through a gatekeeper? So the lower that number, the better they are objection handling at the beginning of the process. So that is a great number to measure. That's really going to tell you how skilled your new guy is at having the conversations that matter. Now we're going to look at engagement to follow-up activities. We had a conversation with a decision maker. What happened after that? What did we need to do next? Engagement to appointment. Now that's almost the magic number. So instead of looking at random dials to engagement, start looking at, or pardon me, random dials to appointment, start looking at engagement to appointment. When we get the decision maker on the phone, how often are we able to convert that conversation into an appointment? Remembering, of course, that you don't want them converting unqualified things to appointments. So there's a few other things going on in your pipeline that you need to pay attention to. Completed follow-up activities is the single most important metric that I would be measuring because your entire process is going to be contingent on these follow-up activities. If you go back a few slides and think about the, dis the difference between displacement and disruption selling, displacement means we're always going to be in the right place at the right time with our company top of mind when it's time for them to actually make a buying decision. The only way we can do that is to make sure that we are completing our follow-up activities as scheduled on time. So if an organization identifies when they're going to make a decision, you need to change your sales cadence to focus on more frequent touches as that date gets closer. And if you fail to do your follow-up activities appropriately around that activity, you're not going to win that deal. It will all come down to how well are your sales reps clocking those off of your PSA or your CRM. So if you really want to see how effective your team is, take a look at how long their tasks stay overdue. That's the first thing you want to clean up in your company. If people are leaving tasks open and cherry picking through the things that they feel like doing that day, instead of completing all of the activities on their schedule as committed to, you're going to be missing deals. And finally, one of the numbers you want to look at is conversations to conversions. So we spoke to this many decision makers and we won this many deals. So looking at it from the very beginning, so look at a list that you purchase online, for example. Buy your list off of Dun & Bradstreet or Info USA or wherever you're getting it from. 30% of that list to begin with is absolute garbage. So if you're measuring your sales rep's ability to take a thousand garbage leads and turn them into magic, you're always going to be disappointed with their performance. You need to look at your sales funnel a little bit differently because it's going to change over time. There's only so much net new opportunity in any given market. So what your sales funnel looks like in year one should be completely different than what it looks like in year three. You're going to measure different things year one because you've got to get through that 30% garbage ratio. And if you're consistently prospecting through to year three, year three should be almost exclusively follow-up activity. So you're going to see a huge change in what your sales funnel looks like year to year. And if you know what you're looking for, you're going to know if you're doing it correctly, even when there aren't deals on the table. click or no one of the things that we've noticed that is the most effective for outbound prospecting 
for MSPs is actively soliciting referrals. So high growth MSPs are not sitting around waiting for their customers to bring new leads to them. They're going out and looking for them. They're asking people for them. I'm having a little trouble with the uh, clicking through part of this. Sorry, that's my fault. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So again, an MSP comes to us and says, hey, Carrie, we built our business on word of mouth, but those deals just aren't coming in anymore. What can you do to fix that? So if the idea of cold calling terrifies you and you never want to do it, there is a way that you can build your business without ever making a cold call, and that's by building a really powerful referral engine. Ask for referrals constantly. Don't wait for people to bring them to you. But remember that customer satisfaction is essential to build your active referral network. So before you ask anybody in your client roster for a referral, make sure that they are 100% happy with the services that you're providing. Nothing is more offensive to a client who is disgruntled than you going to them and saying, hey, who do you know that could use our services? The first thing they're gonna think is, you're not even doing a good job with my account. So this is a great opportunity for you to not only check in with all of your clients and identify, yes, they are 100% happy with you. Yes, they are poach proof. This is a great way for you to start identifying people in their network that will make warm introductions. So if you don't want a cold call, you have to get someone to introduce you. Other ways to become really successful at building referral network is to, is to become an expert in the niche of your choice. So if you go back to the beginning of the slides where Rob was talking about that Australian MSP who became the subject matter expert on crypto locker, I believe that was the way that it was described. I mean, that guy now, that guy has business coming to his door because he became an expert. He put himself out there, he provided content, he spoke to everyone relevant, and now all the business comes back to him. That's what you wanna do if you're building a referral network. You don't sit around and wait for the newspaper to call you to comment. You call them and you say, hey, I'm an expert on this. Can I contribute something quarterly? Can I contribute something weekly? You call the associations, you offer them the same thing. And the best piece of advice, if you're attending those networking groups like BNI or similar, instead of going to those groups and saying, hey, who do you know that needs IT support? Think about suggesting trigger-based event referrals as opposed to need IT support. It's really hard for someone to rack their brain and say, oh, yeah, I know. Like nobody's talking about how they need IT support at cocktail parties. You're never going to find that. But you will find people who are moving offices or adding headcount or acquiring a competitor, right? Those are great times to have conversations with businesses about how they're gonna support that growing organization. So think about ways where you can have business coming to you instead of you constantly having to go look for it. Wedge selling is hugely important to managing your sales pipeline. You should always ask for the managed deal. So first and foremost, go in looking for the managed deal. And if you can't get that, don't leave empty handed. So the goal here is to have something on your line card that you can sell to everyone, something that you can sell without them having to displace their current IT provider if they're not prepared to do that. But it allows you to begin developing a relationship with them. And it, ideally it allows you to begin that monthly recurring revenue relationship where they just get used to writing you a check every month. Ideally that check just gets bigger and bigger every month until you win all of their business. Find a disruptive wedge. So find something that they're not already using where you can come in and say, hey, notice you don't have this. There is no one to knock out. That means they can buy it immediately. They don't have to wait out a contract. They are, they're ready, they're willing, they're able, they have a need. Make sure that there's something on your line card that you can sell to every department within a company. So stop thinking about sales as we can only sell to the C-suite. You can sell something to everyone if you've got something on your line card that's relevant to everyone. There is nobody in an organization whose life doesn't improve when their technology works perfectly. So start playing the long game so that you can win more deals more often. This one is hugely important and I can't stress it enough, protect your base. There's only one way that my clients make money and that's when we take your clients away from you. So your base is more important than new business. 
your renewal process begins at hello. It doesn't start right before contract renewal. You need to make sure that from day one, you are keeping the promises that you're making to your clients. So don't promise them that onboarding is going to take 15 days if you know it's going to take 45, right? That's the first minute where your company starts becoming the company that they're waiting out as opposed to the company that they're delighted to be doing business with. Think about ways that you can upsell, cross-sell, and increase your MRR with the companies that are already on your roster. If you're just filling a leaky bucket, all you're doing is working really hard for nothing. Your revenue is flatlining. You cannot steal a happy client. So if your clients are poach-proof, when our company calls and tries to win that business, your clients are going to tell us to get lost. But if you're not performing the way that you've promised your clients you're going to, our callers are all trained to poke holes in the kind of support that they're receiving. And we're trained to identify where competitors are falling down. So if, if we know that company A falls down on onboarding and we find out that this 50 seat law firm is working with company A, the first thing one of my callers is gonna do is ask them about their onboarding experience. We're gonna make them relive that event knowing full well that that company dropped the ball on it. So happy clients don't leave and unhappy clients are easy to poach. Think about that first and foremost. Your base is your biggest source of new revenue. Is everybody on your roster buying everything that you sell? And when I think about the new opportunities that Datto's putting on the table, like that uh, networking opportunity, now you've got an opportunity to go back into your client base and say, hey, look what we have now. It's fantastic. And the final differentiator is execution. The only person at the end of the day that's going to be responsible for the success of your business as a business leader is you. So what do you need to do? You need to lead by example, right? You can't let your sales reps get away with murder. If they're not following the plan or the process that you've identified, you can't let your top performers be measured against one standard and your new callers be measured against a different standard, right? Everybody does the exact same thing. We have a process. That's how we grow. We've made a plan, we're all gonna follow the plan. But remember that no plan is gonna be perfect, so you can't spend the next year developing the plan. You need to start now. And then you need to hold steady. Nothing works overnight, there's no magic bullet. And that's, I think, one of the biggest challenges when companies come to us or any other vendor looking for done-for-you marketing. No third party can do this for you without your participation. You can't just hand off the most important part of your business to a third party vendor and say, okay, go make me money. It doesn't work like that. You need to participate, you need to engage, you need to let that vendor know what you do and don't like about what's happening. You need to help them continually tweak the process. Hiring a vendor is just like hiring an employee. You have to be involved in the process. And if you're not going to get involved, your project isn't going to succeed. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what guru or what third party vendor or what employee you hire, right? At the end of the day, execution is going to make the difference between success and failure. And if you just hand it off to somebody and say, okay, well now I'm just gonna sit here and wait for the money to roll in, you're going to be disappointed. And that brings us to David. Thank you, Carrie. Um, it's Rob again. As uh, as Carrie goes through this stuff, I mean, sales is not easy, guys. There's there's no doubt about that. Um, it it's funny because having a lot of conversations. This is obviously one of the big topics: is how do I sell? How do I market? Those kinds of ideas. And you know, for us to say that it's it's simple and easy, it's not. Uh, there are things that we can do to make life easier. The key to it is though, like sales is not magic. And a lot of people will go, oh, I just don't have the personality to do it. And I don't have the money to hire another sales guy or something along those lines. It's not magic. There is a recipe that's in there. There are steps that you can take to get pretty much all the way there. Um, especially if you're, if you're not good at it, there's a lot of tools and tips and tricks and everything along those lines that are out there. You just gotta become kind of a student of it and you can get it there. And I think that's probably you know the real key to all of this. And then also, you know, over time, if you understand the sales process, hiring sales guys becomes even easier as well. Um, this great, Carrie, awesome content. Uh, 
because you know obviously I'm, I'm a vendor here i've got my products i got my tools i've got my market now carrie has a plan to help you execute on the marketing plan and we've worked with carrie and her team uh both internally in helping us do our lead gen as well as our partners and doing their lead gen one of the things that we do really well here at data one of the few organizations that's still doing it is we have an mdf program and our MDF program, what that does is it allows us to give you guys funds to run events, to do campaigns, those kinds of things. And there's a couple of our partners that have leveraged those MDF and leveraged some managed sales pro activities that have turned into very, very positive ROIs. And if we get a positive return on investment on those, we actually do them again and again and again. So we've actually had partners that have leveraged these types of programs, uh, leverage the tools that we've got, leverage the funding that we actually have to help you do this and have been wildly successful as a result. Now for us to stay, stay here and you know we're going to solve all your problems is one thing, but to actually have a partner here who can actually uh, knows what you guys are going through on a day-to-day -day basis, this is why we bring David and Hilltop Consultants to the table here to talk about his experience in leveraging both the tools that we've got as well as the execution of the process that Managed Sales Pro's got. So David, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Rob. Um, let's see if I can click through my uh, my headshot here. Carry lots of great content, by the way. Uh, lots of good takeaway points, uh, even for us, you know, who've uh, been lucky enough to uh, to use you in the past. So, my name is David Kaswitz. I've been with Hilltop Consultants for uh, just over two years. I sold my MSP to Hilltop and uh, you know, have been with them ever since. Hilltop has been in business for about 14 years. Last year we did uh, just under 7 million. And uh, this year we're uh, on track to exceed uh, exceed eight. In the past year adding, you know, $172,000 of, uh, of monthly MRR. So uh, it, it's working pretty well. Uh, I would say during these past couple of years at Hilltop, the, uh, the company has kind of taken a, uh, a mental shift from the perspective of, Kind of changing from, you know, an expert tech support and, and uh, customer support business to really trying to align itself as more of a sales oriented business because, you know, like Carrie was saying, these referrals, they just end up, you know, drying up over time. They slow down. Uh, you know, there's no great, no greater indicator of, of developing a, an excellent customer support tech support company when you're getting referral business and, but in order to drive new business and grow to uh, the extent that everybody here on the call, I'm sure, wants to grow, you really need to focus more on uh, kind of the sales efforts and, and uh, some of the stuff that Carrie was, was mentioning. Hilltop has been involved with Datto for a long time. As Rob was mentioning, we are on the advisory panel there and uh, use Datto, I would say, almost exclusively on our wedge issue. Uh, sales approach uh, from the perspective of, you know, uh, BDR continuity and uh, now more recently kind of from a security perspective. Uh, it, it seems like almost every new business that we get engaged in uh, has uh, inferior backup and uh, security practices and, and uh, you know, data is a fantastic lead in for us for that. I, one of the ones we wanted to talk about specifically was so we had engaged Carrie uh, about 18 months ago, I, I believe that uh, two years, 18 months ago, and, and you know, Carrie and Managed Sales Pro started making some calls for us and so forth. You know, we used them for, for just about six months, and you know, during that time, you know, we had gotten you know quite a few leads that uh, we we ended up going out on, and, and uh, you know, some took longer than others to uh, to come to fruition, but. You know, most recently, even after, you know, 18 months from the time that Carrie first reached out to this this client, we ended up landing this deal because of, you know, the lead-in from Carrie's company, uh, Managed Sales Pros, as well as, you know, using uh, the wedge issue that we found at this, this client after an assessment on site, which was uh, inferior backup and, and security. So a year and a half later, you know, we're staying in touch, we're making phone calls, I'm checking in with the point of contact. You know, seeing how our kids are doing, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, building a relationship. Uh, 18 months later, they get hit with crypto. Turns out that their, you know, their current MSP had not had any backups, any viable backups for the past two years. And, um, you know, which was a, a surprise to everybody. So, uh, obviously, the first call they made was to us because we were, you know, kind of 
in their face and so forth and, and positioning ourselves, we'd warn them, you know, that this was probably going to happen to them. So, um, you know, obviously now they're on Datto, uh, <laughs> as you can imagine. So, but, uh, you know, going to the slide here, you know, we had uh, aligned, uh, aligned the call with, uh, with Carrie, got, got in front of the client, you know, did our presentation, went back with an assessment and, and presented there. They didn't decide to go with us at the time because we were a, um, you know, a, a price and a cost increase from from what they're currently using. Uh, however, you know, 18 months later, you know, it, it, uh, it we were able to demonstrate. You know, obviously, you know, the the uh, the price increase was well worth. And they ended up shutting down their business for a month uh, while they rebuilt from scratch entirely, including financials. Uh, so it was a, you know, as you can imagine, a big headache for them. So what we do typically with our with our our leads, I mean, our prospects, we make a first contact with them. It's, you know, it just doesn't stop with you know getting someone on the phone and they call you in to meet them. You go there to meet them. You don't sign a deal and they just drop off. Obviously, these people have to be nurtured unless they're coming to you as a referral, which you know most MSPs are kind of used to building business through a referral basis. Um, you know, you have to nurture these leads. You have to build a relationship. You have to establish a trust and so forth. So, in order to do that, you know, you kind of you know, you have to present information, you have to offer, you know, free information to them. You know, we add them to drip campaigns where we, you know, notify them of, of you know, some of the latest horror stories in the news, et cetera. Uh, and over time, you know, that type of relationship development is what will land you new deals with, you know, strangers, uh, not just referrals. And crypto locker, I mean, obviously, I mean, this is, uh, you know, such a such an issue right now. You know, our wedge, we always lead them with the wedge, and our wedge is always, almost always Datto. You know, what are you doing for backup? Uh, you know, oh, you're still using tapes? You know, have, when was the last time you did a restore? I and mean, this is how we do it. And, you know, once, you, once you've explained this process to them, uh, you know, their eyes light up. And, you know, it, you know, it's relatively inexpensive, particularly for any kind of, you know, compared to any kind of downtime. Uh, so for us, we find that, you know, the wedge, our wedge issue you know, we're most effective using data and, and continuity and, and uh, security as our wedge issues. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So over time, I, I think on the next slide here, you know, we, we had invested about $36,000 in cold calling and outbound calls through managed service pros or managed sales pros. And, you know, to date, we've signed from those deals you know, four hundred thousand dollars, not not including the project, you know, the various project work that we've done with these clients. You know, and that that's only on three MMR, MRR deals that we've closed. But you know, if you're able to make the uh, you know the time and effort into into nurturing these leads, I mean, this type of stuff pays for itself clearly. The uh, but you can see the effort that's required. You know, again, getting out of the mindset of you know, going on site, pitching a deal, signing a deal, you know, that doesn't work. You know, you've got to get in there and you've got to make multiple touches. You've got to like, you know, nurture these relationships. You know, one deal took 12 months. One deal took, you know, it says two years here, but it was closer to 18 months. Another one was six months. Um, you know, these, these deals that aren't coming as referrals tend to take a little bit longer to close. But, you know, the more of those you have in the hopper, you know, more, the, more that you're uh, closing on a monthly basis. Maybe all I have, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much, David. So you heard it from David. You've heard it from Carrie. Now I want to give you guys some tools, some contact info. Um, we're running out of time here, and I want to be respectful of your time. So I'm going to encourage you to ask any questions that you've got into that chat form. We'll pull those out, and we'll address those. Um, either that or I'm going to give you an email address in a moment, and that will also give you the ability to contact us. Plus, if you send an email to that email address, it'll bounce back with some of the tools that we've been talking about during the course of this webinar and a few other things. So we actually have been working on defining the sales process to help our customers go to market. Step one, of course, is getting your customer actually interested in your service. And that is using a lot of the different collateral that we've actually got set up in there, including a lot of the eBooks, the ransomware report. I mentioned the 2017 version is gonna be available within the next couple of weeks. Um, and then the uh, uh, RTO calculator 2.0 is going to be there, but we have a ton of stuff that our customers have been using. 
localized for your individual areas. If you're in a tornado area, we've got tornado stuff. If you're in a non-natural uh, disaster area, obviously it talks a lot about ransomware, downtime, those kinds of things. All customizable and all you have the ability to push it out through uh, that market now, which again is a free service that that offers through our partner portal. Once you've got them interested in some aspect of your service, this is where you have the ability to show them how it works. And what we do is we train our customers, our MSPs, on how to do disaster demos. We talked about John from Australia right off the top. He actually does a disaster demo every single month. And again, he's one of the fastest growing MSPs in Australia because he literally demonstrates for his end users how downtime works. And again, we've got those collaterals, those decks, those instructional videos on how to do that. Show them the money, which is basically if you show them how much money they lose by not using a proper uh, continuity service and just traditional backup, something that's going direct to cloud or tape backups, when you can demonstrate for them how much money they lose in downtime, you're also going to mitigate a lot of the uh, objections you get around the price of your managed services offering. And then finally, a, a newer service that we've been giving out to our customers, which is the BDR assessment tool. A uh, joint venture that we did with Rapid Fire Tools using their technology where you can actually run a BDR assessment. It'll give you things like how much uh, data is in the environment, how much is it being backed up, is it all going off-site or being copied off-site, uh, how often are they actually running, what are the risk scores uh, within those environments. So very easy to read reports, and again, these are free for data partners as well. Speed test, bandwidth, it'll actually recommend a device for you as well. So we've put all this together to help you with your sales process. Uh, and if you fire off an email, uh, you'll be able to get access to all of these tools. And if you follow this process, uh, you should be able to win business here. So abc at dado.com, abc meaning always be closing. So if you send an email to abc at dado.com, if you put in the MSP, uh, sorry, Managed Sales Pros Webinar, Managed Sales Pros Webinar in the subject line, you'll immediately get a bounce back email like an out of office that gives you direct access to all those tools that we've talked about. If you have any questions, if you want to talk to Carrie, if you want to talk to David, if you want to get this deck, whatever, we're more than happy to share this with you guys. As I mentioned, we also recorded this session, so if you're interested in getting the recording, let us know. It will be available through Datto, through Managed Sales Pros. We'll make this available, and hopefully you guys will have a better time out there selling and growing your businesses. Carrie, very quickly, if somebody wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, email's great. It's Carrie, C-A-R-R-I-E, at managedsalespros.com. Or if you visit our website at managedsalespros.com, our phone number is right up there in the top right-hand corner, and somebody will uh, direct you to me. And David, if anybody wanted to get a hold of you, ask any questions that they may have around actually implementing this stuff, how would they get a hold of you? Sure. That's uh, just Kasowitz with two Zs at hilltopconsultants.com. You can reach me at David at HilltopConsultants.com. <laughs> okay, David at Hilltop Consultants, Carrie at ManagedSalesPros.com. Uh, this is a great webinar, great content. I love talking about this stuff because it's not your typical webinar, so I want to thank you guys for uh, coming and joining this. I want to thank you for taking time and actually listening to this webinar. I know it's hard to find an hour out of your day to do these kinds of things. Hopefully, we've added some value to you. And again, if you guys are interested in uh, any of this content, information, DAC, uh, recording of this, please send an email to abc at dato.com with managed sales pros in the actual con uh, subject line. That would help me out immensely. Um, with that, I'll, uh, I'll, on behalf of Carrie, David, myself, I want to thank you guys again for joining and stay tuned for the uh, next Dato webinar. Thank you again for coming. Appreciate your time. Thanks.